The sky above the crimson plains of Gorak was ablaze with the fiery streaks of descending artillery. General Sykril, commander of the Draconian forces, surveyed the battlefield with eyes honed by centuries of warfare. His scales shimmered under the alien sun as he issued commands to his troops, his voice cutting through the chaos like a blade. Today, the Zaltraks had come in full force. Their warships hung low in the sky, casting ominous shadows over the Draconian defensive lines. As the air vibrated with the roar of explosions, Zykril felt a flicker of uncertainty. This was no ordinary skirmish. It was a meticulously planned assault aimed directly at him. Flank squads, advance! Shield bearers, hold! Zykril's orders resonated over the din. The ground troops, a phalanx of hardened warriors, moved with precision. Yet, despite their discipline, the Zaltrax's superior numbers began to tell. From his vantage, Zykril watched as his front lines buckled under a relentless barrage. The moment he had dreaded was upon him. A sudden, deafening blast threw him to the ground. Shrapnel rained down, a metallic storm that pelted the rocky soil. Zykril tried to rise, his limbs heavy, his vision blurred. Around him, the remnants of his guard fought valiantly, their cries piercing his fog of pain. He knew he had to move, to retreat, and regroup. But as he staggered to his feet, another explosion nearby sent him tumbling into darkness. The world spun, and the sounds of battle faded into eerie silence. When he awoke, it was to the cold touch of steel against his cheek. Disoriented, he realized he was lying in the shadow of a destroyed tank, its hull twisted grotesquely. The sky had turned a deeper shade of red, and the battlefield was eerily quiet. Zekril tried to call out, but his voice was a mere whisper. Dragging himself to the cover of a nearby rock, he assessed his situation. His communicator was lost, and his troops were nowhere in sight. The Zaltraks had advanced, and by all appearances they had left him for dead, a fallen general on a forgotten field. But Zykril was not ready to yield. Clenching his jaw against the pain, he crawled inch by torturous inch towards a narrow gully. If he could just reach it, he might evade detection and survive long enough to find his way back to his forces. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the blood-soaked plains, Zykril's will drove him forward. Every movement was agony, yet surrender was not in his nature. He was a warrior, born and bred for battle, and he would not end as prey for the carrion creatures that roamed the darkening world. In the growing gloom, he heard the faint hum of an engine, a sound out of place in the aftermath. Peering through the darkness, his heart caught. Lights pierced the night, moving towards him. Friend or foe, he could not tell, but he knew that this was not the end. Not yet. He would face whatever came with the fierce pride of a draconian general, unbroken and unyielding. The human reconnaissance vessel, the UHV Resolute, trembled violently as it breached the atmosphere of the alien planet Gorak. Inside, Captain John Harris gripped the controls, his knuckles white, eyes fixed on the flickering array of sensors before him. The ship was not made for combat. Its mission had been one of stealth and observation. Yet here they were, caught in the gravitational pull of a battle-scarred world. Status report, Harris shouted over the whine of the failing engines. His co-pilot, Lieutenant Mira Banks, relayed information from her console with calm precision, despite the dire circumstances. We've got multiple system failures, sir. Navigation is down, and the starboard engine is on fire. We need to find a landing zone. Fast, she reported, her voice steady. Harris scanned the surface below, the ship's sensors picking up little more than the chaotic energy signatures of ongoing combat. There. That clearing. He pointed to a patch of ground visible on the main screen, relatively free of debris and distant enough from the main conflict. The descent was rough, a controlled crash more than a landing. The Resolute shuddered and groaned under the stress, metal screeching as it scraped against the alien soil. When the ship finally skidded to a halt, the crew was left in a shaken silence, the only sound the hiss of venting gases and the crackle of fire from the engine. Everyone okay? Harris asked, unbuckling his harness and looking around at his crew. They nodded, a few murmurs of affirmation cutting through the ringing in his ears. Banks, secure the engine. Jenkins, I need a perimeter sweep. The rest of you, damage assessment and medical checks. Move, Harris ordered, slipping into the role of a leader with ease born of years in command. As the crew set about their tasks, Harris grabbed his rifle and stepped out onto the alien planet. The air was tinged with a metallic scent, and the ground underfoot was a mix of rock and a strange, ash-like sand. In the distance, the sounds of battle echoed, a reminder of the war they had stumbled into. The planet was not in their mission profile. Their original destination had been a diplomatic meeting in a neutral zone, far from the front lines of any known conflict. 
Yet, a missed jump in hyperspace had thrown them wildly off course, and the damaged navigation systems had left them blind in a sector marked as a buffer zone. Now, they were marooned on a hostile planet, in the middle of a war they knew nothing about. Harris surveyed the horizon, the setting sun casting long shadows across the barren landscape. He felt a weight settle on his shoulders, the responsibility for his crew, and now, the necessity to survive in a potentially hostile environment. Their first order was to establish a secure camp, repair the ship if possible, and then signal for extraction. But as the sky darkened and the stars began to appear, Harris couldn't shake the feeling that their unexpected detour might lead them into events far greater than a mere navigation error. Little did he know, just beyond the next ridge, lay a wounded alien general whose fate was about to become inexplicably intertwined with his own. The early hours of the Gorak morning were marked by a chill that seeped into the bones, an alien cold that was more penetrating than any on Earth. Captain John Harris and his team moved cautiously through the dense forest that bordered their crash site. The foliage here was thick, casting deep shadows that seemed to swallow the weak sunlight. Keep your eyes peeled, Harris whispered, leading the small scouting party. His primary goal was to locate materials that could be used to repair the Resolute, but his secondary unspoken aim was to gather intelligence about the planet and its inhabitants. As they made their way deeper into the woods, Sergeant Avery Jenkins, the team's scout, held up a hand, signaling them to stop. Over there, he nodded towards a thicket where the brush seemed disturbed. With deliberate care they approached, spreading out to cover each other. What they found was not what they had expected. Hidden among the undergrowth was a large armored figure, its scales reflecting the faint light, a palette of dark greens and blues that spoke of camouflage and battle. It was General Sykril, though they did not know him by name or rank, only that he was alien and unmistakably a soldier of high standing. He's alive whispered Corporal Li Chen, their medic, after a quick assessment. But barely. We need to move him back to the ship. He's in bad shape. The decision to help was not made lightly. Harris considered the implications. Saving this alien could open diplomatic channels or lead them into a trap. Yet leaving him to die was not an option he could morally justify. We take him with us, he decided, his voice firm. Jenkins, lead back. Chen, stabilize him as best you can. The extraction was painstaking and slow. They fashioned a makeshift stretcher from sturdy branches in their spare cloaks, lifting the heavy alien with grunts of exertion. Every now and then, Zykril would groan, a sound that seemed to resonate with a deep, painful rumble. Back at the ship, they laid him in the makeshift medical bay they had set up in the cargo hold. Corporal Chen, along with Lieutenant Banks, who had some medical training, began the delicate task of treating the alien. They administered first aid using their limited supplies, cleaning wounds, and administering pain relief agents. As the alien's breathing stabilized, Harris watched, his mind racing with questions. Who was this alien? Why was he left behind? And what would his people do if they knew humans had interfered? Despite the uncertainty, Harris felt a stir of hope. Perhaps this alien could provide them with the information needed to navigate the complexities of the local conflict aiding their survival and eventual escape from Gorak. For now, though, they had done what they felt was right. They had saved a life, not just a human life, but a life all the same. As Harris looked down at the resting figure of Zykril, he wondered about the repercussions of their action. He hoped that, in the end, it would lead to mutual understanding, or at the very least a peaceful resolution to their unintended involvement in this alien war. Inside the cramped confines of the UHV Resolute's makeshift medical bay, General Zykril slowly regained consciousness. His eyes flickered open, taking in the stark, unfamiliar surroundings with a mixture of confusion and wariness. The last thing he remembered was the chaos of battle and the searing pain of his wounds. As he tried to sit up, a gentle hand pressed him back down. He turned his head to see a human, a female, her expression calm and authoritative. Stay still she advised in a tone that brooked no argument. You've been seriously injured. Zykril's throat felt like it was lined with sandpaper. Water, he rasped, the word awkward on his tongue. The human quickly handed him a small container, from which he drank eagerly, the liquid cool and soothing. Captain John Harris watched from the doorway, studying the alien general. After a moment, he stepped forward. I'm Captain Harris, he introduced himself, speaking slowly to ensure his words were understood. You're safe here for now. Safe? Zykril's voice was laced with incredulity. 
In the hands of humans? His tone carried a hint of scorn, mingled with curiosity. He studied Harris's face, looking for signs of deceit or aggression. We found you injured and alone, Harris explained, his voice even. We couldn't just leave you there. We're not your enemy. The concept seemed to puzzle Zykril. In his experience, the battlefield did not afford such mercies. Why? He finally asked, his single word heavy with implications. Harris took a moment before answering, choosing his words with care. It's what we do, he said simply. Help others, even if they're strangers, even if they're aliens. This information seemed to sink in slowly. Zykril lay back, his gaze shifting from Harris to the ceiling of the ship. His mind was a whirl of thoughts, of his own people's harsh survivalist doctrines compared to this unexpected human kindness. As days turned into nights, Zykril and Harris found themselves often in the makeshift medbay, exchanging stories of their respective worlds. Harris spoke of Earth, its diverse cultures and turbulent history, while Zykril shared tales of the Draconian Empire, its vast territories, and the ongoing conflicts that shaped his life. Through these exchanges, a grudging respect began to form between the two leaders. Harris learned of the strategic importance of the planet Gorak and the reasons behind the fierce clashes with the Zaltrax. Zykril, in turn, was introduced to human concepts of diplomacy and the coalition of planets that attempted to maintain peace across the galaxy. One evening, as they looked at a star map, Harris pointed to the sectors controlled by humans. We're not part of the major galactic play yet, but we're getting there. Helping you could mean a new ally, a foot in the door. Zykril considered this. And what do you want in return? He asked, his tone neutral. Friendship, allies, an end to needless bloodshed, Harris replied earnestly. Maybe together we can present a new voice in the council, one that speaks for both our people. The idea was bold, daring, and utterly alien to Zykril's usual tactics of domination and power. Yet the seed was planted. As he recovered under the human's care, the general found himself pondering the possibility of an alliance formed not from conquest, but from mutual respect and cooperation. This unexpected journey with the humans was changing him, challenging everything he had ever believed about strength and power. Perhaps, Zykril thought, there was strength in unity and power in diversity. Perhaps this was the start of something new. As General Zykril's strength returned, so too did the tactical acumen that had defined his storied military career. Together with Captain John Harris, they began preparing for the possibility of a Zaltrax scouting party stumbling upon the human ship. It was a likely scenario that both parties agreed they must be ready to face. The dense foliage surrounding the UHV Resolute served as both a blessing and a curse. It provided cover, concealing the ship from immediate view, but it also limited visibility, making it difficult to spot an approaching enemy. Harris and Zykril decided to set up surveillance using the ship's remaining functional sensors and improvised alarms using materials salvaged from the forest. One late afternoon, as the alien sun cast a reddish glow over the planet, the tension that had been simmering beneath the surface finally erupted. The ship's sensors picked up movement, several life forms approaching stealthily through the underbrush. Positions, everyone, Harris commanded, his voice a low growl. The crew of the Resolute, though not soldiers, knew enough about combat from their survival training to take this seriously. They took up defensive positions around the ship, weapons ready. Zykril, fully armored now, his wounds a dull ache that he pushed to the back of his mind, stood beside Harris. His presence was reassuring to the humans, his towering figure clad in battle gear a stark reminder of his expertise in warfare. As the shadows lengthened, the first of the Zaltrak scouts emerged from the trees. They were tall and wiry their movements quick and agile. But they were not expecting a prepared defense. The first few were taken down quickly, a testament to the effectiveness of the human and draconian defensive preparations. However, it was not long before the Zaltrax adapted to the situation. They began flanking the ship, using their superior numbers to try and overwhelm Harris and his team. The battle grew fiercer, the air filled with the sounds of gunfire, alien war cries, and the harsh commands shouted by both Harris and Zykril. Push them back to the tree line, Zykril bellowed, his voice cutting through the chaos. He moved forward, a force of nature, his weapon dispatching enemy after enemy. Inspired by his bravery, the human crew fought with renewed vigor, standing their ground despite their fear. Amidst the fray, Harris found himself fighting back to back with Zykril. The alien general moved with a lethal grace that belied his recent injuries. 
Together, they formed an effective team, their actions synchronized after days of planning and preparation. The skirmish lasted for hours, the Zaltrax relentless but ultimately unprepared for the staunch defense mounted by the combined forces of humans and one determined draconian. As the last of the enemy retreated, disappearing back into the darkening woods, Harris and Zykril surveyed the aftermath. Breathing heavily, Harris clapped Zykril on the shoulder, a human gesture that the general had come to recognize as one of camaraderie. We did well, Harris said, a tired smile on his face. Zykril nodded, his respect for the humans deepening. Yes, you fight with honor, he replied, his voice gruff with fatigue and pain. As they returned to the ship to tend to their wounds and assess the damage, a new understanding settled between them. They had faced a common enemy and survived, their alliance forged in the heat of battle. Now, more than ever, Zykril saw the potential in this unexpected partnership. If they could hold off a scouting party, they could perhaps influence the course of the war, or at least survive long enough to make a significant difference. Following their successful defense against the Zaltrak scouts, Captain John Harris and General Sykrill realized that a more substantial attack was inevitable. The Zaltraks would not take kindly to the defeat of their scouts, and would likely return in greater numbers. The brief respite gave the humans and Zykril a crucial window to fortify their position and strategize. The crew worked tirelessly under Harris's direction, transforming the area around the UHV Resolute into a makeshift stronghold. They set up barriers using debris from the forest and parts of the ship that could be spared, creating choke points and defensive positions. Harris also implemented a training regimen, helping his crew hone their combat skills with Zykril's guidance, who imparted combat techniques that were new and invaluable to the human team. Meanwhile, Zykril's tactical genius came to the forefront. He mapped out the terrain, identifying advantageous positions and potential flanking routes the Zaltraks might use. His experience in warfare allowed him to predict their strategies and counter them effectively. As the sun set on the third day of preparations, the expected attack commenced. The ground shook under the tread of Zaltrak's combat units, and the air grew heavy with the whir of aircraft overhead. This time, the enemy came prepared, their weapons charging the night with deadly light. Harris and Sykril stood side by side as the first wave approached, signaling their troops to hold fire until the last possible moment to maximize the element of surprise. When the order was finally given, the night erupted into violence. The air filled with the roar of gunfire and the clash of metal on metal. The human crew, though outnumbered, fought with a ferocity born of desperation and newfound skill. They moved fluidly between cover, their shots precise, thanks to the rigorous training they had undergone. Zykril, towering among them, was a whirlwind of destruction, his advanced weaponry and armor turning him into a juggernaut on the battlefield. Despite their valiant efforts, the Zaltraks pressed hard, their numbers seemingly endless. Harris realized they could not win by sheer firepower alone. He caught Zykril's eye, nodding towards the ship. Understanding the unspoken plan, Zykril covered Harris as he sprinted back to the Resolute. Inside, Harris quickly navigated to the ship's secondary control panel. His fingers flew over the console, activating the ship's external defense systems, a last-ditch effort to turn the tide. As the ship's automated turrets came to life, the battlefield changed. Beams of concentrated energy cut through the ranks of the Zaltraks, halting their advance. With the enemy in disarray, Harris and Zykril led a countercharge, pushing the Zaltraks back with renewed vigor. The battle stretched into the night, each minute a brutal struggle for survival. But slowly, the tide turned in their favor. As dawn broke over Garak, the remnants of the Zaltrax forces retreated, leaving behind the echoes of battle and a field strewn with debris and casualties. Harris, Zykril, and their crew stood amidst the wreckage, exhausted but alive. They had defended the Resolute against overwhelming odds, their resolve unbroken. In the quiet that followed, Harris and Zykril shared a look of mutual respect. They had not only survived, they had adapted and overcome. The bond between them, forged in the fires of battle, was now unshakable, and their thoughts turned to the future. They knew the war was far from over, but together, they had a fighting chance. With the ship secured and their alliance solidified, they began to plan their next move, aware that the eyes of the galaxy were slowly turning towards this unlikely partnership on a distant, war-torn world. In the aftermath of the battle, the battered but unbeaten crew of the UHV Resolute and their draconian ally, General Zekril, gathered to assess their situation. The ship was damaged, yet still spaceworthy, 
and the recent victory had provided them with not only a morale boost, but also a cache of Zaltrax technology left behind by the retreating forces. Captain John Harris convened a meeting in the ship's cramped but functional command center. General Zykril, now fully integrated into the group's dynamic, joined him at the head of the table. The crew, though weary, listened intently as their leaders outlined the next phase of their unexpected mission. We've shown that we can defend ourselves, and more importantly, that we can work together, Harris began, his gaze sweeping across the faces of his crew. But if we're going to get off this planet and back to human space, we need a solid plan. We also need to think about what we want to achieve beyond just survival. Zykril nodded, his demeanor grave. The technology we've captured could allow us to enhance the Resolute's defenses and possibly improve our hyperdrive system. It's advanced, but with some modifications we could adapt it to our needs. Lieutenant Mira Banks, the ship's engineer, chimed in. I've looked over some of their tech. It's compatible with our systems, but it's going to take some time to integrate safely. We'll need to be cautious. Zaltrax tech is powerful, but it can be volatile. As they discussed the technical details, Harris shifted the conversation to a broader strategic perspective. There's more at stake here than just getting home. This alliance, he gestured to Zykril and then to the rest of the crew, could be the foundation of something bigger. We have an opportunity to bring this experience back to the Galactic Council. We can show them that humans and draconians can cooperate, that we can be allies against common threats like the Zaltrax. Zykril leaned forward, his voice resolute. My people respect strength and honor, he said. Our joint victory here will be seen in that light. I will advocate for this alliance before the Council. Our combined forces could indeed present a new voice, perhaps even a new faction within the Council itself. The discussion then turned to the immediate practicalities of their situation. They needed to repair the ship, integrate the alien technology, and prepare for any potential counterattacks. The group divided the tasks among themselves, each member eager to contribute to the collective effort. As the meeting concluded, Harris and Zykril stayed behind, their conversation turning to the personal bonds that had formed amidst the strife. You know, when we first crashed here, I couldn't have imagined any of this, Harris mused, a faint smile breaking through his exhaustion. Zykril's response was thoughtful, his tone softer than usual. In war, one learns to expect the unexpected, he said but it is rare to find honorable foes who become allies. I am grateful for your crew's actions. With the alliance now formally agreed upon, both leaders knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges. Yet there was a palpable sense of hope among the crew and their new ally. As they set about their tasks, the foundations of their partnership solidifying with each shared endeavor, the potential of their combined strength began to take shape. They were no longer just survivors, but pioneers of a potential new order in the galaxy, one that could change the face of interstellar diplomacy and conflict. With the Resolute now repaired and enhanced with Zaltrax technology, Captain John Harris and General Zykril prepared to leave the war-torn planet of Gorak behind. The ship, bolstered by advanced defenses and a newly integrated hyperdrive system, was ready to make the jump to human-controlled space. The crew, a blend of weary but determined humans and their draconian ally, gathered on the bridge as they set the coordinates for their departure. Are we ready? Harris asked, looking around at his team, each member nodding in affirmation. We are, Lieutenant Mira Banks confirmed, her hands poised over the navigation console. Hyperdrive is set, all systems green. Zykril, standing beside Harris, added, Let's show the Council what we've achieved together. With a final nod, Harris initiated the countdown. As the engines hummed to life, a powerful sense of anticipation filled the air. The ship vibrated gently under their feet, the new technology seamlessly integrated by Banks pulsing with energy. As the hyperdrive activated, the stars outside the viewport stretched into lines of light, and then everything blurred as they slipped into hyperspace. The journey was smoother than any of them had anticipated, the enhancements working perfectly blending draconian technology with human ingenuity. During the transit, Harris and Zykril spent long hours discussing their plans for the future. They prepared speeches and strategies, outlining how they would present their case to the Galactic Council. The story of their survival and cooperation, underscored by a successful integration of alien technology, would serve as a compelling argument for a more inclusive galactic policy. 
We have a chance to influence not just military tactics, but also diplomatic approaches, Harris explained, his voice imbued with a hope that felt foreign but fitting amidst their recent trials. Zykril agreed, his own voice carrying a rare note of optimism. Our alliance can be a symbol, a demonstration that unity can be forged in the face of adversity, across species and cultures. Finally, the stars returned to pinpoints of light as the Resolute exited hyperspace, arriving in the outer sectors of human space. The sight of friendly stations and patrols brought a collective sigh of relief from the crew. They were home, or at least as close to home as they could feel in the vastness of space. Their arrival did not go unnoticed. News of their adventure, bolstered by the unlikely alliance they had formed, had traveled ahead of them. As they approached the main human outpost, they were met not just by military escorts, but also by diplomats eager to hear their story. Harris and Zykril stood together as they docked, greeted by faces both curious and welcoming. They were escorted to the main assembly, where leaders from various human colonies and representatives from other species gathered to listen. As Harris and Zykril presented their experiences, the evidence of their collaborative success evident not just in their words, but in the very technology that had brought them safely back, the room listened in rapt attention. The implications of their partnership resonated far beyond the confines of the assembly, sparking discussions and debates on future policies. The meeting concluded with agreements to explore further alliances and plans for a combined diplomatic and military mission to return to Gorak and establish a formal peace with the Zaltrax under the new guidelines of cooperation they had pioneered. As they left the assembly, Harris looked over at Zykril, a smile spreading across his face. Seems like we've started something bigger than either of us expected. Yes, Zykril replied, his eyes reflecting a newfound respect for his human comrades. A new chapter for all of us. Together, they walked back to their ship, ready to navigate this new era of interstellar relations they had helped forge, a testament to the power of unity and the enduring strength of diverse allies standing together.